is. As the story goes, um, the court unit, Ma Tang, emptied Ricci's bags. He took his relics, his chalice, other sacred objects, and all on the pretext of finding the secret gems that the Jesuits had, he's basically removing everything from his bags. And at last, the eunuch found a crucifix. And when he pulled out the crucifix, something that the Chinese had not seen before. Right? Um, the eunuch accused Ricci for attempting to, quote, bewitch people with poisonous sorcery and for using this evil object to assassinate the emperor by enchantment. Ricci was terrified. And he didn't expect that, I don't think. Because when you read his journals, it was almost like, hmm, as a Jesuit, um, as a Jesuit who would read in the first exercise, in the spiritual exercise of St. Ignatius Loyola, meditating in front of the crucifix was a common part of Jesuit prayer. Well, he couldn't imagine this response, but there it was. So uh, just, let me just throw one quote out, and this is, this is from St. Ignatius' uh, spiritual exercise. Quote, imagine Christ our Lord suspended on the cross before you and converse with him. What have I done for you? What am I doing for you? What ought I do for you? In this way, gazing on him, so pitiful, as he hangs on the cross, then speak whatever comes to mind. That is, Ricci absolutely made a habit of meditating before the image of our crucified Lord. But in China, that image, and he knew it, was a scandal. I, I published an article about this scandal, the scandal of the crucifix, from a Chinese cultural point of view. Ricci then understood that to be a missionary, you have to be an apologist. And, I, you know, and I'm going to use some terms um, that have been um, hijacked, like the word dialogue. <laughs> um, that term has been sort of hijacked. I don't think Ricci ever thought that Catholic doctrine, in fact, I know this, ever thought that Catholic doctrine should be compromised. Yet, he very much had this notion of being an apologist for dialogue in a society that dates itself 5,000 years as a continuous culture. I don't completely buy that historical model, but I do think Chinese cultural, um, the, the vestiges of the, the sort of the principal tenets of Chinese culture have existed really for about 5,000 years. Well, Ricci understood that dialogue should always be motivated for love of Christ, but it, it also needs to be able to approach different cultures on their cultural level. In Pope Benedict's recent letter to the Bishop of Maserata in Italy, uh, where Ricci was born, he declared this a jubilee year, the 400 year anniversary of Matteo Ricci's death. And to, contemorate, con to commemorate this fourth centenary of Matteo Ricci, um, the Holy Father called Ricci uh, a man, quote, gifted with profound faith and extraordinary cultural and academic genius. One whose dedication was to, quote, weaving, profound, weaving a profound dialogue between West and East in order to root the gospel in the culture of the great people of China, end quote. Well, um, one of the largest problems we face now when we think about Matteo Ricci is defining who he is, right? That is, from China's point of view, he is, well, He's the science, he's the, he's the sort of scientific Ricci. From the Catholic point of view, from the religious point of view, he's the missionary uh, Ricci. So when confronting Ricci, one has to think about his so-called method of accommodation. In Chinese, the imado fa, the method, his law, his system of bringing Christ to China. And that method, by the way, was disliked by Dominicans. It was disliked by Franciscans. It was disliked by the Mission Étrangère de Paris. I don't speak French very often. Um, it was disliked by other orders who essentially saw this Ricci method of, quote, accommodation as compromise. And part of this, which is interesting, 
will result in the so-called rights controversy much later, which wasn't just about the rights, by the way. It was about terms just as much as rights. And when you think about Father Matthias Liu, he had to take Christian terms um, and translate them into Chinese. Well, how do you translate God into Chinese? Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware that the, the Protestant Bible is very similar to the Catholic Bible in China, but the word for God is totally different. The word for God in the Protestant Bible is Shangdi, which means the ruler above. And the Catholic word for God is Tianzhu, which means the Lord of Heaven. And it's, they're very different. So you, can, you know when you open a Bible, whether it's Protestant or Catholic in China. In fact, in China, the, there is no really word for the larger Christian community. There are Catholics and there are Christians. <laughs> So when Chinese move here often and you say, well, I'm a Christian and you're Catholic, they don't think you're Catholic because Catholics aren't Christians. So terms were a very large problem that Matteo Ricci had to confront when he, when he was translating and figuring out ways to express Christian ideas. Well, that's part of his accommodationist sort of policy, and that is thinking about what best makes sense from a Chinese point of view. Well, um, one thing I should say, too, is in the early church, um, certainly the Christian community would sometimes call Aristotle Saint Aristotle. Um, well, this is another complicated issue, right? But when Ricci was in China, he thought, well, if we have Saint Aristotle, we need to have a saint something in China. And that became, not literally, but that became because, of course, Aristotle was pre-Christ. Well, in this sense, Ricci, in his studies, basically concluded that the equivalent from the Eastern point of view, is Confucius. So um, the best way in his mind to, to basically express Catholic ideas was to basically express them through the lens of Confucianism in as much as Aquinas relied upon Aristotle and Augustine upon Plato, if you, if you want to use that, 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 that dichotomy. So the big question is, what is his accommodation is strategy. What is it, what is it essentially, and, and how do we process that? Well, in Matteo Ricci's private journals, um, I, I want to just tell you that in his private journals, he is adamant that his mission is predominantly to convert souls. So anyone who tells you that Ricci was a scientist or a cartographer, that's not what he himself said. Absolutely, through his journals, he'll talk about China. But let me give you a quote. He begins his journals with this. Who can doubt that this whole expedition into China, of which we are now writing, is divinely directed by God, since it is entirely devoted to bringing the light of the faith to the souls of the Chinese, end quote. Despite what Ricci has himself stated as his reasons for going to China, there is actually today a growing number of scholars who basically want to secularize him. Um, just one example, the Chinese Olympics happened in 2008. Um, what was interesting about that is because of the Olympics, incidentally, um, many, many churches that had been closed, the government wanted to put on a good face to the world, so a lot of Catholic churches were restored. They're amazing, they're beautiful. Um, the, 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 the doors of the churches were opened again. So, in, and not only in Beijing, but all over China. In fact, when I was in, um, um, what province was I in? Ah, when I was in Shanxi province at a village called Nanjiang, there was this huge, beautiful church. It was Romanesque. It looked like it must have been built way back when Romanesque churches were being built. And I asked the, the caretaker of the church, when was this church built? And the caretaker said, it's just got finished last year uh, in preparation for the Olympics. It's this big Romanesque church. You go in, it's incredible, high altar, it's beautiful. And I said, wow. And then as I walked out of the front door, I looked across the street, and guess what I saw? The party headquarters. So I asked the caretaker, how do you feel that across the street from your brand new beautiful Romanesque church, um, how do you feel the party headquarters is across the street? And they said, well, you know, at first we were kind of wondering about this, but since they paid to have this church built, we're okay with it. Um, well, 
So I guess my larger point is um, the, the Olympics had some good results. And certainly things are, I think, improving because of that. Um, I don't know about this cooperation uh, between the party and, and the Catholic community. That's another issue.